Jirohita Kasagi. Okay, good morning. Uh, I'm Jiro Kasagi from Tohoku University. So I'm presenting today on the subject comparison of excessive production with using hydrogen, B, hydrogen gas and the deuterium gas. In order to understand the anomalous heat generation in metal hydrogen system, it is very important to qualitatively compare the generated energy when hydrogen and deuterium gas are used. Why? The DD or PP reaction is considered as an elementary process when one assumes the origin is a nuclear fusion. To produce energy, the PP reaction needs the weak interaction, while the DD reacts with strong interaction. The interaction strength is roughly 10 to the fifth times different between them. That means <coughs> change to <coughs> corresponding to the reaction rate is 10 to the 10th times difference. That's a, the question is simple question. That the thermal power generated with D2 gas then far exceeded that with H2 gas. It's a, my simple question. We use nickel copper multi-layer film samples to produce the thermal power in the same condition for hydrogen and the deuterium gas. And qualitatively compare the energy produced by the use of hydrogen and the deuterium. <coughs> Calorimeter ba calorimetry based on measurement of radiant photons provides a reliable evaluation of the heat. Okay, and this is our uh, <coughs> cartoon, uh, simple explanation for the heat excess generation energy using nickel copper multi layer film. But in this conference, our group shows give the three talks, including mine, and uh, Yamura-san and Ito-san already explained how to make, <coughs> how to measure the, how to use the nickel copper multilayers. So I just want to stress that our system is sample are placed in a vacuum. This is very nice. And the temperature range is very high, at around 1,000 Kelvin. Uh, and it's, the sample is inside in vacuum, therefore it is easy to measure the very radiation. That, that is our, our very advantageous point. Okay, so this is a calorimetry setup. It, it's also described, uh, mentioned by Ito-san yesterday. The point is we put the three detectors for the various different wavelengths. The one, one is uh, the uh, so-called, yeah, mid-infrared mid region. You put the so-called mid-IR detector just left side of the uh, <coughs> vacuum chamber. And uh, the other opposite side, we put the two detectors near, near infrared and the visual light. So sample radiate, of course, both sides. So therefore, we have, in this geometry, we have to rotate one by 108 degrees. Then we can get the complete spectrum from the energy, energy range from the 0.22 electron volt to up to, say, let's say, uh, five electron volt, okay? So <coughs> this, is the, this slide shows how to evaluate the excess heat, excess power. The picture uh, surrounded by red, red square shows the uh, cartoon picture. The sample emits a radiation. Yeah, the, the sample setup emits a radiation QS is a, just a radiation from a sample, and a QH is radiation from the holder. And of course, another heat flow going up, going to the uh, chamber wall, 
it's a conduction flow. But in this case, in our case, it is very small. That almost all the heat created somewhere just converted to the radiation. And therefore, uh, yeah, the picture diagram just uh, show uh, left side. Uh, <coughs> this shows the uh, heat flow, heat, heat flow circuit diagram. We have uh, two heat sources. One is a heater, I, I, we said P in. And another one is a excess heat uh, shown by red, red, red arrow. So the T, TC, TS, TH means the temperature of that point. The P in is just created the heater. So therefore, going down and uh, dissipated by uh, surface uh, no, uh, radiation from a sample and also radiation from holder. The heat flow is in steady state. If heat flow, yeah, in steady state, heat flow equation is something like that. Yeah, you see the, in the, the important point is just uh, uh, emphasized by the red, red words. Q total, Q total means uh, the input heat, heat, heat source, heat flow from the sources is just proportional to the QS. QS is the, the radiation we are measuring. The, the <coughs> proportional constant alpha is just depends, only depends on the emissivity of the sample. If the emissivity change, uh, this is alpha is change. But anyhow, we can ca uh, calibrate this system very easily by just changing the PE heater input power, and then get the constant alpha. If the excess power, uh, I mean, if you, we introduce the hydrogen in the system, and uh, if the emissivity is not changed, we can use uh, this uh, equation for the calculation. But actually, if we introduce the, the hydrogen, the emissivity of the sample is a little bit changed, 10% change. So therefore, we can modify that a little bit. We did it, and the final formula is written at the last line, okay? So procedure. We, move, we measure the excess heat for two samples. One sample called CPX18. We measure the first vacuum. It is the, the measurement for calibration run. And then introduce the hydrogen gas. And then, yeah, 20, 26 days for hydrogen gas measurement. And then switch to the deuterium gas. And num <coughs> number two sample called CPX23 we started vacuum again because the, the, this is the main point. I mean, the calibration should do for each sample. And then uh, switch to the D2 deuterium gas, this case, just the order of gas reversed. And then start, and then after that, we change that, okay? We go to the result. So, <laughs> This is a radiation spectrum for this uh, sample 23. On the left side spectrum, I put the three sets of data. The black point is uh, just a calibra calibrated one. I mean, for the calibration one. Uh, this is the, the, uh, without any gas, vacuum condition. And red one, is just uh, using the deuterium gas, and the blue one is uh, hydrogen gas. The ins inset of this uh, uh, spectrum is just a linear scale to see the uh, low energy part clearly. <coughs> we can say easily, yeah, uh, gray, body, gray body radiation appro approximation works very well because you can see the lines and the, the dotted 
data, they fit very well. Actually, the line is a just gray body radiation approximation uh, written formula like that. And from, from for the gray body appro approximation, the, temp and the parameter is just the emissivity of, of the sample and the temperature. These two parameters, the uh, value of these two parameters are determined very precisely. And then we can say that radiations with hydrogen and the deuterium are obviously enhanced over the, the spectra without any gas. You see the enhancement clearly. So this is a very visible evidence that uh, some heat source, another heat source, in addition to the uh, heat from the heat source from heat is really existing. And uh, also we can say very similar radiation power for the hydrogen gas and the deuterium gas, okay? So <coughs> excess heat is evaluated by that equation I showed before. Then this is the, the uh, plot for the evaluation, uh, evaluated excess heat. Uh, left, left side, just see, uh, sample 18, and the right side, 23. We also put the three data, three sets of data. X is uh, just a uh, background measurement. And red corresponds to the hydrogen and the blue corresponds to the D2. Okay, I would say a little difference for the uh, CPX 18 spectra, but it seems to me it's a, a very little. And therefore, I, I, I can say that almost no difference between the hydrogen gas and the deuterium gas. A little bit difference is might be uh, considered the, due to the uh, sample deterioration because uh, the sample 18, uh, H2 ra using, <laughs> sample was in operation long time H2 measurement. Okay, so we also compared temperature dependence. Uh, so this is a plot, same plot, but a uh, different plot, but anyhow, the horizontal axis just is uh, just temperature. And uh, for the CPX18, we applied Arrhenius equation to the H2 data. It fits very well. And then we can get the activation energy of 0.35 electron volt. Just, uh, just this uh, activation energy is uh, really a chemical energy, as, as Ed said, mentioned. And for the other side, we show the, uh, for the result of a sample 23. Again, there, uh, this set is very nice to more or less equal. So therefore, especially for the uh, sample 23, both hydrogen and the deuterium data roughly follow the Arrhenius equation with activation energy is just around 0.35 the electron volt. Okay, so of course, we started the measurement, then a time elapsed, the excess energy decreases. This shows, uh, this, this figure shows the behavior of that. The left side, side is a excess energy depend, excess energy as a function of an elapsed time. So, and the right side 
we show the hydrogen data. Well, very roughly we can say almost no difference in generative power and generative energy between the use of hydrogen and the deuterium. I want to just discuss on this dependence. No significant difference regardless that absorbed gas. In the case of uh, number 23, generated thermal energy per reaction times reaction rate are the same for the reactions induced hydrogen and the deuterium. From a viewpoint that the nuclear fusion is the energy source, the above fact is very strange in a naive consideration. We assume that in the case of D2 gas, nuclear ex excitation energy obtained by DD reaction is converted, converted to the thermal energy by some unknown mechanism. The thermal energy generated in this case is just 11.9 MeV per atom. We estimate them we estimate the reaction probability and the generated thermal energy per reaction for the elementary processes of a reaction at ultra low energies as follows. Okay, this is the, the how the, the my simple uh, estimation for the reaction probability just for the elementary process. As uh, showed the, the the picture over there, I. I use the DD reaction, just a DD. Therefore, uh, wave function can be written just using the relative coordinate RDD. For the PP reaction, but we need the electron, another electron, because if you do the PP reaction, then final state has a positron plus neutrino plus D neutron. <coughs> In that case, positron makes a lots of 511 uh, annihilated gamma rays. In, in the experiment, we didn't see anything about that. So that, for this case, we include the electrons. And the uh, reaction probability is described, the first line of this slide, it's a famous Fermi second golden rule. It's separated Two, three parties. One, one part is a uh, coupling constant or the interaction strength. And then the, then the uh, wave function part. And then final uh, phase space. Okay. So the table shows the, the result of calculation for each uh, element of that. And uh, we, we calculated Oh, okay. So Coulomb functions are applied for the wave function, phi dd or phi pp or phi for electron also. The effect of metal are taken into account as screening energy. So we calculated two cases: just a five electron electron volt for screening energy, and the other one is 300 electron volt screening energy. And uh, I don't have a explain this, but I just want to say that uh, if you compare the reaction rate, this is a very simple one, but uh, uh, this, the reaction rate comparison is the, the second row, row from the right. If the reaction rate of DD reaction is assumed to one, then the PP reaction get the 10 to the minus fifth order, or for the 500 electron volt, or uh, 0.07 for the 300 electron volt order. Okay? So, so the, for the elemental process, the reaction probability with hydrogen gas is less than 0.06, 0.07 of that width of D2. Although the penetration effect makes the PP reaction much enhanced. That is another point I want to say, but over the DD reaction at ultra low energies. So this, uh, this effect very much. Okay, anyhow. 
So I just want to uh, calculate the thermal energy per hydrogen estimate from the uh, multi-proton reactions because only 2P, 2P reaction, it left nothing for the deuterium. So therefore, no thermal energy. So we need another proton and the protons. So the, the center figure shows a 3P plus electron case. The spectrum shows in that figure is the, the neutron energy spectrum. And, oh, sorry, neutrino energy spectrum. So in this case also, the almost all the energy of the, of the Q value taken away from a neutrino. Just uh, left, uh, let's say, in this case, 115, 115 keV per hydrogen. Okay, so the 4P plus E case, uh, the similar situation is, situation is similar, so therefore, only 800 kV per hydrogen. This is the thermal energy. So therefore, thermal energy generated at most 0.8 mV per proton with hydrogen, with hydrogen gas. But uh, for the deuterium gas, 11.9 mV per deuterium. Of course, this is just assumption, but anyhow, 15 times different. And also, this shows the long-term measurement for the, uh, of the, the excess heat. You see the excess heat decays not, not simply way, but has a lots of heat burst, which is uh, uh, analyzed, being analyzed by Ito-san, and he, sh he showed his analysis uh, yesterday. But from this one, we can uh, exclude the uh, e over h, this is thermal energy per hydrogen, that is larger than 123 keV. It is this value. So remind this value, compare the, uh, the process. The only process uh, can be the candidate is the 4P plus E reaction. In this case, 800 keV per protons, so therefore this is larger than the measured value. But if this process happened, the protons up, up to 4.82 MeV are produced in the reaction. So therefore, X-rays and the, uh, nuclear gamma rays should be observed, but we didn't see anything in a, in a preliminary measurement though. Okay, let me conclude. In the anomalous heat generation measured for the nickel copper multilayer foil film, it was found that the generated thermal power was almost the same regardless of whether the gas used was hydrogen or deuterium. This means that generated th thermal energy per reaction times reaction rate is the same for the reactions induced by hydrogen and de deuterium. Assuming a source of energy generation is nuclear fu fusion, we estimate the reaction probability for each elemental process. Okay, he says out of time. So I just uh, want to finish, but uh, uh, I want to stress that from these, it is, it is expected that thermal power generated with D2 is larger than H2 by at least 200 times. However, this is completely incompatible with the present experimental result. Therefore, more studies are highly desired, such as a di di direct measurement of nuclear products, alpha particles, helium-3, emissions, x-rays, and so on, so on. Okay, so this is a near future plan, our, ours. You see, we want to see the uh, area, which is now marked question mark, and there we will find something to connect for the real reaction, pro, uh, uh, reaction source. Okay, thank you for your attention. <laughs>